Make sure you check your bulletin for all of the pertinent announcements. Um, my nephews were sleeping on the job today and did not pass them out. My nephew, not my nephews. Yeah, not the desert. Well, don't do it now, man. We've already done it. You don't have one? Kaya, would you get a bulletin and bring one to Kathy? Make yourself useful, son. There you go. Get, oh, two. Andrew, you did not do a good job passing them out. There are far too many people that don't have them. Kaya, up here to Kathy. Kathy, there you go. Rocky wants one, but he can get his own. All right, good job, Kaya. Well done. All is forgiven. Go and sin no more. All right. A weird church, man. I tell you what. Mark chapter 8 is where we're going today. For what would it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what would a man give in exchange for his soul? We're talking about let's make a deal today. Let's make a deal. Now, um, Chappie got a little uh, adventurous today with our, with our Facebook post. I'm telling you what, this, this artistic license is getting a little much. Me and Wayne Brady and Monty Hall, two of these three are dead. No. <laughs> and Wayne Brady is very much alive, so there you go. Um, is everyone familiar with the show, Let's Make a Deal? Yeah. Right? Because when Monty Hall did it, it was like back in the day. How many of you remember Monty Hall? It's time for you to have a colonoscopy. No. He didn't start out the way it ended up. He didn't start out having people dressed up. Oh, he didn't? No, at first he dressed up in the audience one time. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody caught on to it. That's how it started. It wasn't originally that way. She is just a bundle of information today. I feel edified. Yeah. Hopefully you will learn as much from my preaching as you just heard there. Probably not, but hopefully. All right. So here's the premise. Go to that next slide, Andrew. They all dress up now, right? Yeah. So the premise of the show is to win cash and prizes and then trade these prizes for better prizes and not get downgraded to less valuable prizes. That sound about right? Yeah. Let's go. Let's go home. Or what? Get zonked. Get zonked. Get zonked. No, you don't want to be zonked. No. So it's really an exercise in risk management in silly costumes, basically, right? That's what we're talking about. We play Let's Make a Deal every day. Did you know that? We make decisions, hundreds of them, many without even considering the fact that we are making decisions, right? So, Steve Jobs famously wore a black mock turtleneck and jeans every day so he didn't have to decide what he was going to wear. He just took that decision out. Those of you who are nurses who wear scrubs every day, it takes out what you're going to wear. Next slide. Mark Zuckerberg, same deal with the hoodie and the Adidas slides. Wore the same thing every day, so he didn't have to think about what he was going to wear. He took that decision off the table so he could have more bandwidth to make consequential decisions. Because we make decisions. I chose to wear this jacket today. And it's a little heavier than I should be wearing at this temperature. So I'm sweating profusely right now. It's like a one-man sauna inside this jacket. Hey, now, we're not Methodists, so there. Anywho, and I saw Brother Anderson decided to, you know, basically strip to the waist last week and preach. My God, I can tell I was in South America. No, but so, <laughs> anywho, we have to, I've told the church many, many, many times, and we'll continue to, continue to do this, that holiness is not, and Chap talked about this today, not what you wear, where you go, or what you say, right? Holiness is where? Next slide. Between your ears. Holiness is between your... Who doesn't like a basset hound? Come on. Right? 
Holiness is between your ears. It's making a binary choice that says, does this or does this not please or bring glory to God? Right? It's a choice you make in your mind before you ever go somewhere, do something, put something on, take something off, whatever it is. It's a choice you've made between your ears that says, what I'm doing is either going to give glory to God or it's not going to give glory to God, all right? That's holiness. The rest is an outcropping of holiness, right? The rest is the result of holiness. But the holiness starts between your ears, amen? We believe that? All right, so unfortunately, we play let's make a deal with our conscience and our souls and we convince ourselves that destructive attitudes and behaviors are not at all destructive because we like them. Aren't you glad to have me back? We're playing let's make a deal. Jesus, in this short passage in Mark, really gets to the crux of what it means to be a disciple. Verse 34, he says, And when he had called people to himself, with his disciples also, because he said, this applies to you guys too. He said, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. <coughs> Jesus is having church here, and he decides to open it up with a line about commitment. Right? Jesus didn't do memes. Right? Aren't you glad Jesus isn't your pastor? Jesus would not do a Jesus meme. I would, because I'm me, right? And he says, whoever desires to follow me, Jesus, who was the greatest teacher, undoubtedly put a pause right there. And he says, who desires to follow me? Right? We're all like, it's like being in the military. Who wants to volunteer? Well, no, nobody wants to. That's an open-ended question, right? It's that way in church, too. I need someone. I need a volunteer. And your all arms get broken. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm jellyfish now, right? <laughs> you should never volunteer. That's just because you're wise. Because you should never volunteer until you know what you're volunteering up. All of our veterans said amen, right? Because my dad said they would, they would voluntold me. Y'all ever get voluntold? Yeah. Yeah, you get the amen from you. There's more in your future too, bud, so there you go. <laughs> and so Jesus goes, who wants to follow me? And I, oh, oh, yes, Jesus, I want to follow you. And, 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 and Jesus puts a nice pause there and he goes, well, you've got to deny yourself and then take up your cross and then you'll follow me. And I'm going, well, this just became a whole lot less fun. But here's the problem. We think we can follow Jesus and still be the masters of our own lives. And the two are totally incompatible. The two are totally incompatible. Here's Jesus in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24. He says, no one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You can't serve God and mammon, right? Jesus says it so plainly here. You can't serve two masters. You've got to make a choice. And Jesus puts it in the starkest of terms. He says love versus hate, and loyal versus despise, right? We like to couch things. We like to put things in shades of gray, right? Well, what's a lawyer's two favorite words? That's the second two favorite words. The favorite words, and, and I work with lawyers every day, the favorite words of a lawyer are, it depends. Right? I, I do expert witness work. That's my, fav that's my stock and trade. Well, would you say, it depends. It depends. And we try and do that with our relationship with, well, well, then, you know, is this sin? Well, it depends. And Jesus says, love or hate, loyal or despise. 
And it's a type of commitment that unfortunately we're not familiar with in the church today. We want to make a deal. And Jesus is calling us to sell out. He says you can't serve God and mammon. Now, we, when we read that verse, we've said rightly that mammon stands for money. But let's say, in this case, it means anything of the world. You can't serve God and serve the world, right? It's like straddling a picket fence. That's no fun. Get a visual. Yeah. It's no bueno, as they would say in South America. See, I learned something. But you can't serve God and mammon. You can't make heaven your home if your heart is in the world. Here's what Jesus says a few verses before that. Don't lay up for yourself treasures on earth. You thought I was going to talk about money today. I am not. Where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. Where neither moth nor rust destroys or where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, that's where your heart's going to be. Jesus is not talking here about not having a bank account or retirement fund, okay? We're not talking about being fiscally imprudent, right? We, the church should pay its bills, amen? Thank you. What he's saying here, and this is so powerful, is that you can't be focused on the temporal, that you're oblivious to the eternal. You can't be so focused on what's going on here on earth and your physical self and your physical circumstances and accumulating for yourself that you completely forget there's a world to come, right? And we focus on the world and fun and entertaining the flesh. Next slide. Look, I just came back from a 10-day vacation. I had to get a vacation slide in there, so there you go. That is the Casa Rosada or the Pink House which is the presidential palace in Buenos Aires. Great big Argentine flag there. That's proof that I went. There you go. Because they don't do passport stamps in Argentina. It's all electronic, and I'm a little irritated about it. But I do have two Brazil stamps, so there you go. That is from my vacation. I took that myself. It was winter in the Southern Hemisphere. It was brisk. I think it was like 50 degrees that day. Yeah. We'll talk about my vacation. Can I finish preaching first? I promise. No, we'd rather talk about the vacation. But we, we are more interested in fun and entertaining our flesh that we don't give a second thought about the world to come. Let's make a deal, we say. I'll entertain myself today so I don't have to remind it that I have a soul that lives forever. And what we're doing is we're putting this life ahead of the kingdom to come. Right? Here's what James said, James chapter 4 and verse 14. He says, whereas you don't know what will happen tomorrow. For what is life? It's a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Part of a Facebook group for my um, graduating class, 86. Right? We have a 40-year reunion coming up in two years. 40 years? Holy God, when did we get old? Said the guy who's looking to get a knee replacement. Right? Here's the thing about that, right? So everybody in my class should have had their first colonoscopy already. There you go. Yeah, it's an advertisement for colonoscopies. I get a little kickback every time. No, I don't know. You know. I do, actually. See me after church. Um, in our Facebook group for our class, and those of you who have maybe graduated and are a little more seasoned, seasoned, people are starting to die that I graduated with. You ever notice that? The people you went to high school with are dying, sometimes at an alarming rate. My stepmom, B, who is 84, 5, right? She went to Danville, so there was like six people in her class anyways, and it's down to like two now or something like that. No, there, was, well, there was like 40 people, but it's cut in half. Yeah, right? 
And we, when we graduated from high school, we knew we were going to live forever. We just knew it. I remember I went to my 35-year reunion, and everyone had gotten old, except me, obviously. Obviously. Said the guy with all the gray hair. Right? We don't think it's ever going to happen, especially if you grew up in the apostolic and apparently the Nazarene church. We knew Jesus was going to come. Right? We're never... I turned 50, I'm like, okay, I wasn't ready for this. Even then, life is a vapor, James says. It's here for a minute and then it's gone. In the terms of eternity, the 70 or 80 years you get here are nothing. But because we are living in these 70 or 80 years, they seem like everything. Right? Because it's what you're doing now. It's, let's be honest, it's kind of hard to think about heaven when you're living on earth. Right? Well, well, this life is... I'm living this life. So I want to put it in terms that maybe I'll help you understand. We are not physical beings with a soul. We are spiritual beings with a body. Right? And that body has an expiration date one way or another. Either through the rapture, or you're going to check out someday. And this life is nothing more than the dressing room for eternity. And the choices or the deals we make here have eternal consequences. But we don't think about it because while we're living life, life is all we're thinking about it. But if we're going to think like Jesus thought, we'd go, every decision I make affects where I spend eternity. Jesus continues, Mark chapter 8, he says, For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whosoever loses his life for my sake, and the Gospels will save it. He says, whoever wants to save his life will lose it. You can't fully commit to Christ and live your best life. You have to live for something greater than yourself. And it's an unpopular idea, especially in an influencer generation. Going on vacation made me loathe influencers. Sweet mother of God. We had a lady in our tour group. I don't think she ever used the forward-facing camera in her phone. It was always... <laughs> Sweet mother of Jesus. It's Christ the Redeemer in Rio. It's not improved by your duck lips. Still not proved. But that, there's a thing, and it's, if it's generational, it's a symptomatic of a generation that says, I am the most important thing in the world. Now, there's the fun part. You guys will appreciate this because you know charity. We're in this uh, Sugarloaf Mountain in Rio, right? It's, you take a cable car up, and it scares you to death, and then you take a second cable car up, and it really scares you to death, and it's horrible and I wanted to die the whole time. But that's not the point. So we're taking pictures, and some chica was having her boyfriend, stage manager, companion, take pictures. And Charity and I are taking pictures, and she asked Charity if she could move out of the frame while she was taking pictures. I want to say this for the people in the back, in case you didn't hear. This person, that's my wife, who you all know. Mm, 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 mm. And said, can you move? We're taking pictures. And my wife, in perfect English, because we don't speak Portuguese, said, what do you think we're doing? <laughs> and so now there's an international incident between us and Brazil. Yeah, so whatever. Right? We were so over... 
this. Oh, sweet mother of God. But people think about now, 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 me, 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 right? These are wonders of the world that are improved by my duck lips because I'm so important. <laughs> duck lips. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. You ever see these girls? Yeah. Duck lips. They look stupid. Can we all agree? Yeah. And if you do that, you look stupid. <laughs> yeah. Jesus says, whoever will save his life has to lose it. I've said this before, and I hated it when I said it the first time. I'm going to say it again, and I'm still going to hate it. You may have to sacrifice your desires on the altars of God's will. God may be calling you to do something that doesn't agree with the plan that you have laid out for your life. And you have to decide who is in charge, you or God. That is wildly unpopular in North America. Because we want to be self-determinant. And we want to blaze our own path. God has not called you to blaze your own path. He has called you to pick up your cross and follow him. Jesus put it in these stark terms. That's, what will a profit a man if he gains the whole world? I don't know how many likes Chica got there on Sugarloaf Mountain. But she got a good helping of charity's opinion. What will profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? We've heard this verse forever. Now, you can't preach this message without this meme. This has to be the worst trade deal in the history of trade deals, maybe ever. The time comes when we make our own choices and we choose wrongly over and over and over again. And we say, I wouldn't trade my soul. And I say, sure you would. I'll say it to me. Sure I would. Because you're doing something that makes you happy or makes you feel fulfilled or lets you live your best life. And we have whatever works for us right now takes priority over the kingdom to come and the work of God. Aren't you glad to have me back? <laughs> and we make that deal when we go, you know, just this once, just this once. And even if that thing grieves the Holy Spirit and violates the law of God, we make a deal. We make a deal to be happy and fulfilled and whatever now, and we'll risk eternity. And Jesus says, what would a man or what would a woman exchange? And the answer, unfortunately, at times is a whole lot of stuff. But church, we need to get back to Jesus. Amen? Amen. Joshua says this, and if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, and if you'd stand with me today, I'm almost done. Choose for yourselves this day whom you'll serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. The question that Joshua posited to Israel that day is the one I'm going to put before you today. God has positioned this church for great things. Right? We've planned, we've prepared, we've added seats, we've added parking, we've got people. We're, I mean, we're ready. But we've got to be ready, right? We, the organization, is ready, but we... How many knows the church isn't this? It's this. And the church, us, we have to be ready. 
And so the question I lay before you today is what Joshua said. Choose you today who you're going to serve. Are you going to serve the gods of your flesh, the things that make you feel good for a moment, the things that leave you temporarily fulfilled but ultimately empty? Or are you going to serve the Lord? As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Here's the last verse I want to leave with you. Jesus is talking to the woman at the well in Samaria, and he says, Jesus answered and said, Whoever drinks of this well will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, but the water that I shall give him will become unto him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. And this, so the, Jesus puts this choice to the woman at the well in Samaria. He says, you can drink from this well, this temporal well, and it'll fill you for a minute, but you'll have to come back, and you'll have to come back, and you'll have to come back, and you'll have to because it doesn't really satisfy. Or you can drink from the water that Jesus gives you. Now, here's the thing I noticed. Not only will it satisfy you, but it'll spill out into others. Isn't that the purpose of the church? right? And if I'm only filling my flesh and feeding my flesh and feeding my flesh, not only am I destroying my flesh, I'm having no impact. Oh, but if I decide to drink from the water that Jesus gives, not only does it satisfy me, but everyone around me, hey, that person's been with Jesus. That person's been with Jesus. That's what I want to do. Amen? Let's choose wisely. Let's come together as a church this morning. And I want us to pray. Every day we make choices over and over and over again. I kept my jacket on because I chose not to iron the back of my shirt. Now granted, it's probably steamed out by now because, you know, lost weight, still fat. So, well, we make choices. Here's the thing, here's the beautiful thing. Do you know you can turn things around in just a second? Today I choose. That was what Joshua said. Choose you today who you're going to serve. And then he didn't go, you're going to be on six months of double secret probation. And then we'll bring it to the committee and we'll see if we'll let you in, yada, yada, yada. That's not what that's about. But we say, Lord, today I choose you. The best example is the thief on the cross, right? If you take... No comfort from anything. Take comfort from the thief on the cross. This a guy who had ruined his whole life to the point where he got a Roman death sentence. You've made some pretty good mistakes if you wound up on the cross. He doesn't cry. He doesn't, he doesn't even come to an altar. My God. There's no, there's no piano music. There's certainly not a Hammond B3, which is required for Pentecost. But he says, Jesus! Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And what's Jesus say? Today. I love it. Not you're going to have to cool your heels in purgatory for six months and then we'll bring it to the review. No. Today. You're going to be with me in paradise. Today. Jesus, do you not know what this guy has done? The Romans are crucifying him. He is a bad dude. Today. Why? Because he made a choice. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. You can do that today. Today. Jesus, I may have made a lot of bad decisions, but today I'm turning it around. Today I'm making a choice. You can make that choice tomorrow and the next day and the next day because that's the God we serve. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you this morning. Lord, I thank you that you're a God of second chances. I thank you, God, for the third and fourth and tenth and twentieth, God, that we can come to you today and say, Lord, 
I've made some mistakes, but I want to change. I want to make a deal with you. I want to live the way you want me to live. I want to be live in a manner that, that pleases the Holy Spirit, God. I, I, want to, I want to be, Lord, a reflection of your glory in my life and your spirit in my life. Lord, I pray for each person in this congregation this morning. Lord, I pray that you would help us to make a good choice, Lord, to follow you and to walk according to your will and your word today, Lord. I thank you for the word of God today. I thank you, Lord, for the move of the Holy Ghost that we felt. And I pray that you would move in the lives of people in this place, in this house today. Lord, I thank you for your word and for your spirit. And we give you praise and glory in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Make a good choice today. Amen. Amen. I love every one of you. And ain't nothing you can do about it. I'm glad to be home. I will see you all on Friday.